Welcome back. Someone recently asked this question, what actually influences the pitch or the scale of a flute? Though a flute can be made of different materials, one thing to note is that the material does not have any impact or a significant impact on the pitch or scale of the flute. Uh, when it comes to the pitch, there are certain factors that are built into the construction of the flute, the physical construction of the flute. Then there are certain factors that are the, the player is imparting. So then finally, there are the environmental factors, right? These are the three different kinds of factors. Now, what we can control in the manufacturing are a few. And then environmental factors, you don't control them. You know, you deal with them. And so what are those factors? Primarily, it is significantly influenced by the diameter, the inner diameter of the tube. Okay, that's number one factor. Number two factor is the thickness of the tube. Then the other most significant factor is the, the length dimension. And the length dimension is really, if you look at it, it's really not fixed for a flute. The maximum length is fixed. So the maximum length in your flute is from the blowing hole, from the center of the blowing hole to the end of the tip. Actually, it's not even the center. It's this end of the blowing hole to the end of the tip. And now that determines what note you play when you close all holes. So all other notes are determined, their frequencies are determined by the distance from the blowing hole to the, the hole. In a precise conversation, it's actually from the tip from this side to the tip from this side, this side, so this end. Because this is the actual length of the column. When, when you're actually calculating, what matters the most is this. But when we get the dimensions of the flute, those dimensions are from center to center. Now, each hole has a diameter, whether it's the blowing hole or the note holes, and that diameter influences the length of the uh, air column. So the diameter of the hole also has an influence. Then the other influence is how the player holds it. So if you, if you play like this, however you play, uh, you're going to some, cover some part of the blowing hole with your lips. So there is a little bit of coverage of your of this blowing hole by your lips and that could be 3% for someone, maybe 5% for someone, maybe 10% for someone. Ideally, uh, it should be zero, but it will never be zero. I would like to keep it somewhere from 3 to 5%. So that's another factor which we have to consider in manufacturing the flute. Now, the other factors we said are, number one, the player influence, uh, which is a player could blow a lot of air uh, with a lot of energy and they may increase the pitch of any note they are playing. Now, we, while manufacturing, we cannot really account for that so much. And the right thing is players should not take it to an extreme. They should play within the nominal, the middle range. And then either, uh, you, know, you know, the posture, when you hold your flute like this, and then you have the right posture, you standardize that posture. And if you are looking at some document or some notes, and then if you're turning down, it's possible that you're going to drop the scale of the flute compared to the concert uh, scale. Now, finally, there is the environmental influence, which is the ambient temperature and density of the air. Now, those we cannot control and we don't bother so much about them because you anyway have certain latitude in, in playing your flute. So you have a latitude of, let's say, about minus eight cents to plus eight cents uh, of a semitone, right, in, in playing the flute. So in case you are in a situation where the, where the air is very cold or dense, or it's extremely uh, rare and, and uh, warm, then you may have to adjust it in your plane. One of the influencing factors is the where you actually closed uh, this one. Uh, but one point to note is that it does not have a significant influence on the true scale of it. 
but what it influences is how well the scale is between lower octaves and, and higher octaves. It, it so, has a little bit of an imbalance and the cork, including its material characteristics, it balances that uh, difference between the two and gives you consistent frequencies or notes in both the lower octave and higher octave. In order to get really first-hand experience uh, in knowing these factors and how big of an influence these things have, I wanted to make a flute and I wanted to make a carbon uh, fiber flute. So here I am trying to make a flute. Bamboo is composite material. It has the pulp, which is the essential body of the bamboo. And then it has fibers, bamboo fibers themselves, which are along the length of the bamboo. It is probably this composite structure which makes it sound better. And also the quality of the pulp itself, that is the bamboo material itself, how it resonates, how it vibrates. All these things probably give that unique quality to a bamboo and by far it's the best material. Now CFRP is carbon fiber reinforced plastic. So it shares some of those properties with a bamboo. It is also a composite material and uh, it's essentially plastic resin. So the pulp, the bamboo pulp equivalent in this is plastic resin and the fiber equivalent in this is carbon fibers. So carbon fibers run through this, this material. And instead of being uh, linear fibers this way, it's actually a, a woven sheet of carbon fibers, which is embedded or wrapped within uh, the resin. That's how this is made. It may be possible for us to have carbon fibers longitudinally placed in, in resin, but I cannot get that material right now. But I'm going to experiment with this and see how this is going to work. To start with, this is a open pipe. So open on both sides. And uh, and it's a 22 millimeter inner diameter and 1.5 millimeter thickness. And the total length of this tube is 500 millimeters. And this makes a good flute for uh, an A-sharp four uh, flute. That's what I'm set out to uh, make. I'm assuming a 3% lip cover and uh, I've got these dimensions to make uh, a flute. But they're all measured from one end of the flute. So let's start making, uh, marking this flute, this uh, tube. Created this little jig so that I can hold my flute as I'm working on it. So I can simply place this within this slot and then press it in because we cannot uh, mark on this pipe what i've done is i've uh, put a piece of tape okay now on that tape we have all the dimensions marked and the places of all the holes marked so we have the blow hole the blowing hole here and the note holes one two three four five six and the seventh so we're going to make the blowing hole once we make the blowing hole we're going to test the scale of this flute and remember that this is uh, <clears throat> this is not bamboo had it been bamboo we would actually burn these holes into it but because this is plastic cfrp we need to drill it okay at this point it's close to what i want which is 10.5 millimeters uh, but I'm going to file this and uh, make it the exact size. And uh, as you can see, there are these fibers that are still uh, showing up. Okay, so now we've come to a critical point in flute making. So we have our blowing hole, right? And this dimension, that is the distance from the end of the flute to the blowing hole is what I wanted it to be. So when these three holes are closed, it is A sharp. So right now the flute is, is at such a point that because all the holes are closed, including the pinky, it should sound E as we blow this thing. 
okay however i still don't have the cork in place so i'm going to just use my hand to block this to just to check if i'm in the ballpark or i'm way off okay so before i do that let me sound what e sounds like okay so this is e I'm going to close one end with my hand. Pretty close. I think it is a bit lower than uh the the e right now it's sounding a bit lower than e and i need to see how lower and i need to correct this now the point is when we make flutes you should always err on the side where the length or the distance between the hole and the edge is more than what you actually want that way what happens is the flute will start with a slightly lower frequency than what you want. And the reason why that's better is you still have a possibility for correction. So I deliberately drill this hole about one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, less than what I really want. So the distance measured from the tip of this hole in this direction towards the open end, right? In this direction from this tip is probably a bit longer than what it should be and that's why it is sounding a bit lower so what i'm going to do is number one i'm going to place a cork so that in my lower octave and the higher octave i'm going to balance the two e sounds they should they should both be correct both in the lower octave and higher octave and by placing the cork here at an appropriate distance that's going to take care of that and at the same time because this is a bit lower, then I'm going to slightly expand this hole by, by using uh, a circular uh, file like this. It's circular in shape or semicircular, and I'm going to use one of them, and then I'm just going to manually expand that. And uh, also I'm going to use something like emery paper to, to finally shape it and clean it and also give it nice edges. And then we are going to see what that's going to sound like. But the key point here is that always err on the longer side so that you have the possibility to correct so i got a piece of cork like this and uh, i've cut it into uh, the required diameter and uh, if you need to uh, if you need to shape it and slightly reduce it you can even rub it on an emery paper like this this cork when it goes inside here the sound waves are going to reflect off one end of that cork so what I've noticed is that this is a cork from a Western flute. What I've noticed is that they have a metal uh, plate and this is a reflective, they, they call it sound reflection plate. So that's what they have at the end of this cork in, in a metal flute. So what I want to try is to see what sort of impact it has on it. So I've got this coin and I'm going to stick this coin to the end of it, end of the cork, just like that. And okay, then, so now I've got the coin on the other side and I'm going to place this in. I'm going to push this to the desired location. And the recommended location for this is 17 mm from the center of the blowing hole. Okay, at this point, we've closed this and I'm going to eventually glue this, but for now I'm going to leave uh, so that it's flexible so if i hold it like i would hold a finished flute now that the blowing hole is complete we're going to drill these three holes now the key point to note is that when we made this hole remember that we wanted to err 
on the longer side when we make this hole the measurement or the, the distance that we care about is not from the end though our dimensions come from the end the distance that we care about is actually this that is from the blowing hole to the first hole because this is what's going to determine the air column so if we want to err on the longer side we should make this hole on this side that is any error should move it towards the the open end of the flute so that if you want to correct it then you can enlarge this hole and come towards this side as you can see as i'm drilling these holes a lot of carbon is coming out okay at this point i've drilled all the holes and uh and uh finished them with uh, files and emery paper okay like i mentioned this is a 22 millimeter inner diameter and a, a 1.5 millimeter thickness carbon fiber reinforced plastic and you have seen the manufacturing procedure and uh, and aesthetically i don't think i got the holes uh, very nicely especially because uh, drilling into this material is a little bit of a, a challenge but i'm sure if we use a different kind of drill bit we can improve this and get it right and let's quickly look at the tonal quality of this one of this is if I close the three holes then it is uh, a sharp then if I close the two holes then it is uh, C like to try is uh, is uh, uh, same similar kind of flute but with pultruded carbon fiber material so that it comes as close as possible to bamboo and bamboo of course is the best material it gives you the best resonance and best tonal quality however this has certain conveniences uh, one other thing that I want to say is uh, every flute is should try to make one of these things uh, whether you get it accurately or not, that's immaterial. But you learn a lot about making a flute, the influence of various factors and the difficulties in making a flute so that you can, the next time you select a flute or you talk to a flute maker, you can appreciate their work and you can select the right flutes. And as you are, uh, as you're playing, you will understand the instrument better and then you can have a better relationship with your flute. Uh, and one more thing is that once you make a flute, you do realize that if your flute is a bit low on the pitch, then you can actually relatively easily correct it than if it is high on the pitch. And I'm not going to talk more about it now, but if you make your own flute, you'll understand why. Uh, hope this gave you some good information about uh, flute, its construction, the materials and the influence of various factors. And uh, in another video, let's talk about the tonal quality of various materials and what exactly do we mean by the tonal quality. Until then, take care.